Guys, wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can, with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1 800 Give PJs. This is the Locker Room Podcast. Ryan has been talking mess all morning about how he could body up Terrell Owens on the football field. Well, Facts. we've got a special Facts. guest joining us on the Shell Penzo performance line Uh-oh. here on the Locker Uh-oh. Room. It is. Terrell Owens should be should be Hall of Famer. I'm you know I'm firmly in that camp. But T.O., what is your response, man? Ryan Hollins is out here talking a T.O., lot of mess up, about baby? you. What's up, baby? Well, first, well, first of all, I don't play defense, so he wouldn't body, be bodying up with me. But he'll probably. I know he's mentioned Richard Sherman, so uh, he might be biting a little bit more off than he can really chew. Um, oh, you know, I, I understand. I understand your your length, your verticality. But, I mean, I don't know what your footwork is like, and I really don't know what your hands are like. So, uh, again, when it comes to that. The hands are special, T.O. The hands are special. And the footwork has nothing but a a step slide, pivot, post, up and under, baby. Let's eat. T.O., you made a living going across (laughs) the middle, too. Like, do you think Ryan's got the toughness to take some of these shots he's going to take from these guys? Well, you know, I mean, the stigma with, with basketball players as why they play basketball is that they're a little soft. And Ooh. if you watch, yep. and if you watch, and if you've been watching the playoff, these guys are getting ticky tack fouls. I mean, they're going to into all the theatrics. So I don't know about the going across the middle. And I did hear Ryan say that he wouldn't like to go across the middle. But if you're going to be a football player, I mean, you got to go across the middle. I'm with it. I ain't never been scared, T. Talking to That's Terrell it. Owens here on the Shell Penzo <laughs> performance line. Go ahead, Pat. T.O., I'm just curious, when you guys did play, and Ryan said you guys played one-on-one and that you did beat him, and what was the move that you were able to get take advantage of him It was a game of horse, Oh, it was a game of horse, horse. I thought it was one-on-one because I think I would have taken T.O. knows how to body up and get you on his hip and, and ride you all the way to the rim. No, nah, nah, we, we, were, we, were playing, we were playing horse, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, my athletic ability is, is far greater than Ryan's athletic ability. Let's just let that be known. I'm letting that be known Ooh. right now. So Uh-oh. We, we went to a more skillful, you know, game of, uh, of of horse, you know, so that was our game of one-on-one. So, again, for a big guy, I will say he did surprise me with his shot. But that's the thing with these basketball <laughs> players. They have muscle memory. These guys are in the gym nonstop. And for all you guys that are out there listening, kids and whomever, if you're trying to perfect and want to be at the best and be on the top of your game, the gym, repetition, that's where it starts. And Brian has been a great guy to to, 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 to really learn from, understanding that this guy right here, he knows his role, understanding what he brings to the game, and that's why he played in the NBA for so many years. Talking to Terrell Owens here on the Shell Pennzoil performance line, and uh, I'm very interested. So, T.O. Ryan, how did you guys get to know each other? Like, where did this come from? Uh, this, this I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of basketball. I mean, I think Ryan has a, an affection for football, but all my life when I grew up, I wanted to play. I wanted to play basketball, and it's funny we're having this conversation because I'm here in Vegas right now uh, for the Bo Jackson Charity Golf Tournament, and I ran into uh, a, a guy that played with the Chicago Bulls, Cliff Levingston. And, again, you talk about a role player, a guy that played his position to a tee and helped that helped those Bulls teams win championships. He basically basically said the same thing. Like, he understood his role. And for me, yeah. when I play basketball, I know my role. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a point guard. Um, I, I'm a, I'm, I could consider myself somewhat of like a, a – a Scotty, Pip, a Scotty Pippen. I'm a tweener. I play in transition. I can get buckets. I'm very athletic, and that's 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 my game. Tio, you're six foot three. You you wouldn't do anything at the rim. We got seven footers down there waiting for you, Tio. It sounds good in pickleball, but it's not happening. What? But Tio, Tio, let's go what back to football. What is, Tio, what Tio, you wouldn't have a chance. Tio, you're six three. Ryan, you're only six three. Ryan. Hey Ryan, let's not. I'm not gonna. I, Ryan, I'm about to put you on blast. I remember years ago, <laughs> yes. and I do, ha- I do have some people that can back me up on this. Don't make me get them on the phone call. Ryan, you tried to dunk on me, and I blocked your shot. 
Okay. Oh, you oh, grabbed oh, me. Right. Right. Tio, you yeah. grabbed me and you found right. me. Anybody can foul. Right. That's that's the reason football players don't play basketball is because they have no right. they have no coordination. They grab and they right. foul, Tio. Right. That that is not even gonna fly. I have I have basketball cred from a number of guys around the NBA. So that's not gonna fly. I blocked you. T.O. And you're seven T.O. Foot. It sounds it sounds great, T.O. But I'm not buying it now. T.O. It's now let's go sale. back to let's go back to football. <laughs> I'm, I'm all in on this, by the way. I'm not Me buying too. it, T.O. I'm but going with go T.O.'s to version. Football. Of course you are, Pat. You're going with Jordan, and I'm going with LeBron. We're on other sides of the fence today. Now, T.O. Let's go back to football. Yeah. You are a all Hall right. of Famer, hands down, 49er for life in my heart. My guy. Day one, one of my favorite players of all time. And Goodell recently brought Chad Ochocinco in to help him talk about celebrations. Now, I want to know why he didn't bring the man of the celebrations, the man who kissed the star, the man who made popcorn famous in the NBA, NFL. T.O., you got to uh, talk to us about that a little bit, man, because I feel real <laughs> slighted right now, and I want to know what's going on with the NFL. Hey, I don't. I don't know, man. They. I don't know why they want to go with second or third best. I mean, everybody Ooh. knows that I'm one of the ones, the the best ones to to do it. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't a trendsetter. I didn't. I didn't start this thing. But you know, I think in my era, everybody saw that I was somewhat of a trendsetter for what guys are doing now. Um, my motivation for the dances and all the, the touchdown celebrations that I came up with was to get in the end zone. You know, that was that was that was my my motivation to to score every Sunday. And really, the challenge that presented itself with every matchup that 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 guys had with me uh, on, on on Sundays, Mondays, whenever it was. So you know, there were guys. Again, I learned from the best in the game. You know, that was Jerry Rice. I had a number of great coaches, but Jerry's the best in the game. So in order to to try to get on that level, he set the bar for me from a, a small guy, a guy from a small town. Alexander City, Alabama. Went to Benjamin Russell High School. Then went to a small school, UT Chattanooga. So again. I had to make myself known. So in order to do that, then I had to get in the end zone and why not celebrate? You know, I understand that these fans come out, they they worked hard all week. They want to come out, they want to watch a good football game, but at the same time, you want some entertainment. So that's what I try to provide them with. Is is there any celebration that you can think of that is over the line? I mean, is there any kind of celebrate touch on celebration that is just too much? In your um opinion? I mean, I, I think that's the thing with me and my celebrations, and I think over the years when uh, the league has tried to take away the fun and stuff from um, from the from the guys that really that you know try to celebrate and bring excitement to the game, um, I think the obscene gestures, things of that nature, that's distaste, distasteful, and when you mess with or tinker with the integrity of the game, that's when it's over the top. I think the things that I did, they were very creative. Um, they were they weren't over the top. They were fun. People had never seen seen what I had done before. Um, I think when I pulled the sharpie out of my sock, that was that was yes, me being sir. creative. <laughs> it, it, that, was, that was me being creative. That was impromptu. I did that right before that series, and that was the confidence that I that I possessed in myself that I knew that I was going to score on that drive. And it didn't have any, it didn't had it had nothing to do with my opponent or whoever it was. It was Sean Springs. Sean Springs and I were good friends. <laughs> It could have been, you know, it could have been Harry, Dick, or Joe on the other side. I would have done the same thing. It just so happened that, you know, me and Sean are, are friends. We shared a mutual uh, 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 financial guy, uh, uh, financial guy in, in uh, there in Arizona, and I ended up giving him the ball. So that's where all the, the commotion and the chaos started. But, again, that was just me being creative. It's it just incredible. It's uh, the locker room here. Mike Gold Jr., Ryan Hollins, Pat Bradley, talking to Terrell Owens on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Uh, T.O., I know you said you're out there for a golf tournament. You got time to stick around with us for one more segment? We want to get you in on like the LeBron Jordan debate, some of the Richard Sherman stuff. Do you got time for that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm loving yes, sir. it. I want it. This is the Locker Room on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app on the line, getting his opinion on a lot of things, and I, I want to jump right back into this because we don't have a ton of time uh, with you, but with the NFL right. offseason, there's been so much 
uh, 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 focus on Odell Beckham missing OTAs and things of that right. nature. Uh, you had Richard Sherman out in Seattle and the, the piece we just read on him and maybe the tumultuous relationship there. And I'd be interested, such a large part of your career was being that guy that was often criticized for your role in certain locker rooms. How did you handle all of that attention of being a guy that was as pol- was that polarizing and did receive a, a lot of attention and a lot of times a lot of blame from people? Well, I was number one. I was very confident in my ability, um, despite what was being said, um, with the commentary from an, uh, a, a number of analysts uh, around around the country. I was just very confident in my ability, and I did everything necessary to to prevent those things from happening, which is performing poorly, uh, which would probably would have validated some of the things that they were saying about me. When you talk about Odell Beckham Jr. and the things that he's doing now, missing OTAs. I don't know what that's about, and if it's you know because of a new girlfriend, things of that nature. All he's doing is setting himself up for for even more criticism. Because if he's going into the season, uh, he's injured or he's not playing uh, up to par, then these are things that you know he's setting himself up for a lot of criticism, and then he can't he can't go and then you know you know. Now, not take the backlash or be not as receptive to all the criticism that he's going to get because he's really bringing all the attention, the negative attention to himself. Um, I talked to Odell Beckham Jr. last year. I know he was going through a lot of issues. And, you know, we had a great, great talk. And so I think with the talk that we had, uh, it turned this season around. Talking to Terrell Owens here on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Thanks. And uh, so, what? Uh, for as far as that goes, and have you talked to him at all this off season? Is he someone that you would you know encourage to reach out to you right now? I have not talked to him this off season. Um, I, I've, I've run into him, but we haven't talked to at any great length about anything. But Odell Beckham, I mean, he's an individual. He's a definitely a talented receiver. Um, I think in order for him to really, really be the team leader that his team needs, then he needs to do the necessary things, such as going to OTAs. Um, being a leader, um, the things and the, the route that he's taking right now, uh, again, I think, that's, I think that's a recipe for disaster, and, and um, it's not going to bode well for him going forward. T.O., I, I got a question I've been thinking about you, actually, with Tony Romo retiring. Does that surprise you, and, and were you also surprised he'd get a chance to compete for the, the job last year? Um, no, it's, it's – I guess – in a sense, it is somewhat surprising because I know he wanted to really continue to play play football. But I think understanding um, that you know, what's most important for him and his family is his, is his health. At really at the stage and uh, of his career, um, I think you know if he could have gotten the right opportunity to go in and play and really compete for, uh, I guess, a dream job at this stage of his career, maybe he would have considered that. But um, I think he's done a great job. Is really kind of assessing really his health and what's most important, and I think that's his family and his kids. Tio, we got about a minute left here. really wanted you to weigh in on LeBron versus Jordan. Who, in this debate, which side do you fall on here? We've been very uh, all over the place this morning. I, I, I hate this is only a minute because you guys are comparing LeBron to Jordan when, again, for me personally, I don't think he surpassed uh, Kobe Bryant. Oh, okay. Um, oh. But Kobe Bryant, oh. if you think about what Kobe Bryant has done, and his 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 body of work, then it's hard to skip over Toby and then go to MJ. Gotcha. All right, Terrell Owens falls on the Kobe Bryant side of things. Tio, really, I mean, really I, quick. I, I mean, I like I like both of them. All three are phenomenal yeah. athletes. By no means, trust me. Don't Tio. get me twisted by any means. It's <laughs> in my category, in my box. It's it's MJ, Kobe, LeBron. Gotcha. The top the top three from To. This is The Locker Room on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We've got Terrell Owens joining us here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, getting great perspective from him on a lot of the things happening in locker rooms in both the NBA and the NFL. We were talking before, T.O., about Odell Beckham Jr. and some of the things going on with him during this offseason, and so much of the focus goes on things like the boat trip and him being out in California now. You hear about him being out with... You know Johnny Manziel and Iggy Azalea and all these people, and people focus on a lot of that outside stuff that we all get to see as the public. I'm interested from your perspective because you got a lot of that as well. What was the perspective of your teammates, the guys that saw you day in and day out and still noticed all of these noticed. things but also got to see you work? 
Well, that's that's the thing. When you talk about professionalism, and I think that's one of the things that's probably going to come into question when you talk about OBJ, um, especially with the things that he's doing now that's not really helping the cause. Um, but in terms of my teammates, they knew that I came to work every day. I mean, I came to practice. I practiced, you know, just as hard as I did, you know, as I played in the game. Um, I'm a, I, I try to be a professional at all costs. But, again, that doesn't mean that I'm not without error or mistakes. Um, there are going to get I mean, guys have missed meetings. I'm sure there's been a number of guys, guys that have missed meetings and done little things, uh, you know, as they played the game. Um, but when you come to uh, to, to practice every day, um, you work hard, you play hard, and you see the results, then some of these things, outside things, kind of get swept under the rug. Um, but I think, you know, in Odell's case, he has to be careful because, again, uh, as we alluded to and I mentioned to earlier, um, when you go in, if you go into the season and then injuries start happening and then obviously you got, you got, you got to sit out um, or you're playing and you're not playing um, up to the standards in which everybody's uh, expecting, you have a new shoe contract, all these things come into play and all these outside uh, unnecessary issues uh, like missing OTAs, I don't know what that's about, you know, if it's, you know, hanging out with the girlfriend or whatever, that's not going to bode well, not only, you know, for – uh, the public, but not even for, for, for the organization. So I think those are some of the things that he has to clean up. Um, I think the world of OBJ um, as a person, as a talent, um, I know we talked about individ- individuality. Um, I don't have a problem with him being an individual as long as he comes to play. Um, you have to be that type of person uh, to not really stand in a room, stand, stand, stand. You have to stand alone, be yourself. And I think that's what he's doing, and I don't have a problem with that at all. That's T.O. Richard Sherman, another strong personality. On the defensive side of things, he made this statement that he would dream of playing for the Cowboys or the Patriots. Now, as an athlete, as a guy who's been there before, how do you advise him in this situation? I feel like he's playing with fire, and what can the Seahawks do? <laughs> I mean, I, how, how do you feel like he's playing with fire? I mean, this guy right here, I think he's very calculated with, with what he's doing. Um, I think Richard and everybody else know he's a very smart individual. Um, if things aren't going well uh, where he is right now and if he's posturing, um, gesturing to, to, to part ways or, you know, really solicit, you know, some of the other teams that are out there that he could possibly play for, you think about the Cowboys and, and the Patriots, um, I think he's he sees where he can fit in. Um, he sees those two those those markets and see where he could possibly win a championship. Um, when you look at Dallas, there are some missing pieces there. Um, he definitely could help there. And you look at um, you look at you know the New England Patriots who hasn't gone over there um, that that could possibly um, have the ability of a Richard Sherman and try to fit in you know to their their pieces of the puzzle and to help them win a championship. So again, I don't I don't have a problem with with Richard Sherman or what he's saying and, and what he's done. Um, this guy is a, again he's a consummate uh, professional. Um, he does it. He comes to play. Um, that's Richard Sherman. I expect mm. nothing less. Mm. To part of the story. Go ahead. Oh, Pat. go ahead, Mike. You got All it, right. Part of the story, To, is there was sort of a rift, even going back to the Super Bowl with Russell Wilson throwing that pick, not giving it to Marshawn Lynch. Had you experienced a problem at times when you played with the offense and defense within the locker room? Have you guys ever been? Was there a time where you were at odds with each other? Maybe not one one side not holding up their end of the bargain. Well, I think yes and no, but I think you know to Richard Sherman's credit, I mean, I think you got to look at the magnitude of the game. Um, yeah, I may have had some issues during the regular season or what have you, but again, regular season and Super Bowl, it's a bit different. When you could have definitely have a chance to go be, to be back to back champions, uh, you know, two Super Bowl champion winner. That's what's rubbing – I'm pretty sure it's not just Richard Sherman. It is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Um, again, you don't get a chance like that uh, to, to be in the Super Bowl back-to-back and, and have an opportunity to win it. And in that situation, yeah, there are some questionable um, calls. There are some cus- uh, questionable um, play calling and decisions made during the course of the game, but none bigger than – than the situation to, to, to pass the ball versus running when you have a guy like Marshawn Lynch at the one-yard line. 
Mm. We're talking to Terrell Owens here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Lines, the locker room, Mike Gold Jr., Ryan Hollins, here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. T.O., to that end, you play, You had one of the better Super Bowl performances that we'd seen from a wide receiver, <laughs> albeit in, in a losing effort. Were there any of those hard feelings that you had to get over for yourself coming off of that game where you felt like you left it all out there? Man, I, I did. I, I, it's funny you mentioned that because I was just thinking about that. I was just I was somewhere and they were replaying all the Super Bowl, um, you know, the Super Bowl great games and, and things of that nature. And it made me really reflect back to when I played in Super Bowl thirty nine, and I caught nine passes for one hundred twenty two yards. Um, everything that was thrown to me, I caught. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like, man, if I would have gotten or could have gotten one or two more opportunities, I think we could have won that game. Um, but again, you can't go back in time and change anything. But, you know, for me, I think that's why a lot of people respect me and what I did um, for the game, despite what all the criticism has been about me and my character, is that when I stepped on the field, I brought it. You know, it didn't matter, you know, if I was injured. You know, everybody goes through a bunch of injuries, you know, throughout the course of the year. But I played here. I played hurt, um, you know, with throughout with all my teams. And there are games that I played with broken stuff and nobody ever knew about it. But the most notable one was when I played in the Super Bowl with, yeah. you know, when I had, you know, all my ligaments torn in my ankle and I had a, two screws in a plate and my fibula was broken. So um, I think that's why people respect, you know, me and what I've done for the game and really just my really just my personality. I mean, I had fun with the game and I wish I would have enjoyed it more. Um, that's why if I could get uh, given be given the opportunity to play again, um, I, w- I would love it because. I never really felt like I really got to enjoy the game because, for me, it was always work. I wanted to win so bad that I didn't really take time to enjoy it. It's really interesting to hear you hear you say that now. Wow. Was it, it wow. and was that something? Because I know you mentioned how much coming up under Jerry Rice meant to you and how much you learned from him. Was that something that got instilled then? Because you could argue maybe that's what Odell has missed now is just having oh, that veteran yes. tutor. Of, of yes. that kind of caliber. I mean, how much did you take away? Is there is there a particular moment that stuck out with you and Jerry where you're like, wow, this is really what's being a professional is all about? Well, I, I mean, I saw it on an everyday basis. Coming in as a rookie uh, um, in 1996, I mean, coming from a small school, I wasn't really exposed to uh, the, the, the greatness, all the greatness that I got exposed to when I went into that locker room. You talk about guys like Mert, Hank Harris, Barton, Ken Norton, uh, oh, Steve. My guys. Young. <laughs> I mean, I mean, again, yes, I sir. saw it. That's what that's what the 49er way was. A, uh, that's what it was. It was about professionalism. Um, really, you know, taking your practice habit and really duplicating it on game day. Um, that that offense, that system was based on timing and precision. And along the way, I got to see guys be professional. Um, but at the same time, I took a little bit of that. Again, like I said, I pride myself in not having any off the field issues. Again. Every guy, every great, I'm sure, has had some issues, some disagreements, some arguments with their coaches or or coordinators or uh, what have you. So I'm no different. But people seem to think that I'm the worst of the worst. Um, But, again, I I, I value what I was able to take in um, on a daily basis um, from those guys. Um, But I was able to do it, you know, a little bit of their way. I took, you know, what I learned. But at the same time, I had to be Terrell Owens. And I think that's, again, like I said, that's what I think what – what people really appreciate about me, especially when you talk about the young guys that that look up to me, that have come up to me and said, man, I patterned my game after you. Um, I like what you bring to the table. Again, guys, we understand the team team concept, but at at the end of the day, in order to be go from average to good or from good to great, there's there has to be something to set you apart. And I found what that was with me and my ability and I did that, and I think that's why people know when people say they may not know Terrell Owens, but they know T.O. That rings the bell. Yeah. Well, T.O., we really appreciate the time here, man. This has been awesome and enlightening yes, stuff sir. from you. Thank you for everything. Enjoy the enjoy the golf tournament that you're out at now, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, T.O. Oh, absolutely, man. Hey, thank you guys for this impromptu uh, session right here. This is good. <laughs> exactly. All right, brother. <laughs> Shout out to Ryan's uh, Instagram live on that one, setting up the, <laughs> the Terrell Owens multi-segment interview right there. Great stuff yeah. from T.O. taking you inside the locker room as we strive to do here. This is The Locker Room on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.